You're listening to Leadership Podcast, a series of short, insightful discussions with experts in the field of volunteer leadership. Brought to you by the ARIA Center for Leadership Development, your interviewer is Elaine LaChapelle. Well, welcome. I'm glad you could join us. We're here at the ARIA Leadership Conference in Toronto, and I have a few moments to speak with Doug Keeley. He's one of our presenters. He'll be speaking a little bit later. Doug is the CEO and chief storyteller of The Mark of a Leader. He's a keynote presenter, a communicator, and a self-professed leadership junkie, which I love. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about five-level leadership. Wonderful. Thanks it's great for joining to be here. us. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I understand you believe that leadership is everyone's responsibility in an association. Can you explain that a little bit? Uh, if you want a scary statistic, all of the HR firms who do studies inside corporations will tell you that in a typical organization today, 20% of the people are leading. 60% are just following them, doing whatever they're told, okay. and 20% are actually wrecking it for everyone else. <laughs> so our belief is the most powerful thing you can do to change an organization is to change those numbers. And that means making more people thinking and acting like leaders. And that doesn't mean they all have to be hierarchical. Right. Uh, we think of much more powerful definitions of leader than just hierarchy. A leader is someone who's in control. So that can be anyone you're trying to get to an outcome that you want that's mutually beneficial. A leader is someone who goes first, which means constantly doing things you or your competition haven't done before. And most powerfully, leadership is about helping others to be their best. So when you think about it, all the great leaders in history, Mandela and so on, have all been able to elevate their people to levels of performance that probably they didn't even know they were capable of. So when you talk about five-level leadership, then I guess you're referring to that concept. Is that right? Well, the, if you look at the history, you'll see that the world has been changed by people like us. There's no secret sauce, there's no special gene that <laughs> some people are born with and others don't get. Uh, mostly there are what I would call ordinary people who have been fully engaged in what they're trying to do. And the five levels that we all work on as human beings, which are the levels of engagement, are our spirits, first of all, some big idea that gets us excited. Then our right brain, the imagination, which is creativity. The left brain, which is intellect and logic. Our hearts, which is our passion as human beings. And then our hands, which do the work. Most businesses work on two of those. The left brain, here's the plan, <laughs> and the hands, right? But great performance in human history comes from the other three, actually. You have to have those two, but great performance comes from a big idea that's driving you forward, thinking about problems and ways of doing things differently than everyone else is, and then the fire, which is the passion as human beings. I love that. That's great. Now, I introduced you as a chief storyteller, so I know that you love to tell stories. Why is, why is that so important? Why do you think that's an important part of leadership? Well, cultures of all kinds are built on story, right? Historically, human beings have tied cultures together through storytelling originally on walls of caves and then with the printing press through books, music, and so on. And uh, I actually believe sadly that that's getting lost in the corporate world today. Uh, we're, we're, our stories are becoming PowerPoint charts and I think that's very problematic because studies have shown that if you're listening to PowerPoint, you're only engaging that tiny part of your brain which we actually use for reading. But none of the emotional sides of your brain are being touched. With a great story, you touch people on all of their levels, their spirit, their right and left brains, their heart and their hands. And that's how you get people fully engaged. So I'm passionate about delivering and driving cultures of leadership which are built on stories. What are the stories that made this company great? What are the stories that our top performers have to tell? How do they exhibit behaviors that we can model? What are the stories that if someone new comes into an organization, that you could show them the story and say, this is how you should behave if you want to be at your best. And that's why we're so passionate about stories. Are there a couple of uh, stories that you particularly like that you feel have a really poignant message? Well, the Mark of a Leader is all built on stories. We have a okay. library of 50 live stories that we do, which all have video and music. Uh, but if you ask me for two, I would say in the world of business, my favorite story is the story from the 1980s of the FedEx driver who was trying to get blood uh, which he knew was time sensitive to a hospital and uh, roads were closed. So he rented a helicopter to get the blood there on time. That story was leaked out into the world at a time when FedEx was just starting to take off as a brand and FedEx took off. Now, the odds are probably 50-50 that that was just a folklore story. It may <laughs> never have happened, but it had a totally 
powerful turnaround effect on the FedEx brand and they went on to become what they are today. That's the power of story because everyone said, well, I want to have a company like mm -hmm. that deliver my time sensitive yeah. materials. Uh, in the other world, I would say probably my favorite story uh, from the last century is Shackleton's Endurance, which was the story of Ernest Shackleton and 27 guys getting stuck in the Antarctic for 20 months uh, with no food. And they survived because of what today we think of as five-level leadership, where Shackleton kept his men fully engaged all the time. He knew that, he, that his big problem was actually not food and weather. His big problem was his men's spirits, because if their spirits were broken, it would all fall apart. So he constantly kept them engaged on all of their levels. And he made it clear to everyone that they were all getting out of there or no one was getting out. There would be no halfway. So everyone's job was to help each other to survive, which is the model of helping each other, helping other people to be their best. And it made the difference between life and death for Shackleton and his team. And I would put to you, it's the difference between good and great performance in business today. Wow, and that is a powerful story. Unbelievable story. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Doug. I'm glad we had a few minutes to chat uh, about uh, the mark of a leader. Thanks, Lane. Great being here. Great. I've been speaking with Doug Keeley. He's CEO and Chief Storyteller of The Mark of a Leader. You can find out more about Doug at his website at themarkoftheleader.com. You've been listening to Leadership Podcast. To subscribe to this podcast, go to aria.com slash leadership.